people should know that not all birds migrate. Some birds just stay in the same place all year long. So we think about the birds up in the boreal forest, the chickadees stay there all year round. They can find, believe it or not, insect eggs and little things like that in the bark that they can find enough food to keep them keep them going during the winter. But a lot of the other birds are, feed on flying insects or moving insects, and there aren't too many of those up up in Canada in the, the winter time. So they have to go somewhere else to find food. Migration is almost always about finding food. Uh, it's not to get out of the cold because birds can survive cold, uh, but there are certain inhospitable places that they need to leave, uh, but it's almost always about food. Well, uh, the thing that starts bird migration usually is uh, a change in uh, daylight. Uh, and what that does is that starts, this is sort of the, the proximate mechanism that, that uh, gets the birds' uh, brains changing, more different hormones being produced. And the birds can, can sense the, uh, even very small changes in daylight length. They, there gets, there's this cool term that's in German called Zugenru, and that means migratory restlessness. Uh, and so we can, you can watch this, and it's been well studied in birds that if, if you keep them in captivity, as the light changes, as the, the, the days get, get smaller or longer, they start to get antsy, and they just kind of move around in their, their cages, and they, they just want to go somewhere. And, and it's just this need to uh, to go further, to go further, go south, go south, go down, you know. And in fact, it's actually fairly rigorous in some species. Uh, that it's very, very predictable. Like when uh, when red winged blackbirds turn up in central New York is is always within a two week period. Um, and so some of these things are very precise. However, migration. On a you know for an individual bird depends on the uh, circumstances that that bird is in, and that includes changes in weather and and local conditions and stuff like that. So there's always that sort of fine tuning. So it's never precisely the same. Yeah, that's an interesting thing about migration is we tend to think, oh well, yeah, they just go, but they don't. Um, that there are different different. The sexes do different things, uh, and the the juveniles do different things. And typically, what what you see going first are the the, the males, the breeding males, of a, a lot of different birds leave the the breeding grounds before uh, the females and the juveniles do. And then, as a as, again as a general rule of thumb, the the adults leave first, and then the juveniles leave later. And maybe they just need a, a longer time to fatten up to to. Uh, to migrate, but uh, that's a very, a very predictable pattern that we see. Different birds do migrate at different times of the day, and to, a lot of people are surprised to know that the the bulk of migration happens at night. That most birds fly at night, uh, and there are several reasons for this. One is that they. Uh, uh, you know, there are fewer predators being able to catch you at night. Um, you can't really forage that much, so you might as well fly. When there's not enough light to see very well, birds can actually turn on a different sense and see the magnetic fields of the earth. And so they can tell north and south because they can see the magnetic fields. If I read that, that news and it's like, oh, that's why they fly at night, is because then they can see. And that does seem to be the consensus is that uh, a lot of the, the nighttime flying uh, is because that allows them to use their magnetic sense to detect north and south. Well, hummingbird feeders, the hummingbirds really like hummingbird feeders and you won't make them stop migrating uh, and stick with it and stick with at your feeder till it gets cold. They're not going to do that, but they will use it as a, as a source of uh, cheap energy that they can put on and, and uh, uh, help them along their way. Um, suet for some of the other birds is good. And the other thing to do uh, to help birds along during this is turn off your lights at night. That's a big one. Yeah. And of course this really plays out in the cities and then there are the, the, 
the programs that uh, uh, people have, uh, a number of organizations are working with, including the, the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, that are trying to encourage big cities to uh, cut down on their light usage uh, during peak migration time because birds get confused. So turn off your lights at night, uh, plant native plants, put up a hummingbird feeder. That doesn't do it all, but the, those are a couple of tangible things that people can do.